I'll never forget seeing Elizabeth Taylor in front wow. of the stage and like standing. Oh, okay. Against, like in the front row up against the stage with people. Right. And putting her arms up towards Prince like she was a, a big fan clamoring for Prince to know. It's me. Yeah. Your old friend, Liz Taylor, damn it. <laughs> Our next guest is a longtime friend of Musicians Reveal. He is a longtime Minneapolis musician producer, a member of Prince's first group, a member of Prince and the Revolution. And on the 40th anniversary of the release of Purple Rain, he's still deep in the mix, still makes his home in Minnesota and is out there performing the music of Prince and the Revolution. We welcome Matt Fink. Dr. Fink, how you doing, Matt? I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. How yeah, are you? You, I'm doing great. You <laughs> came off of a sold out show at the Dakota over the weekend. Uh, what yeah. went over there? I'm sorry, say that again. What What happened at the Dakota oh, this weekend? Well, it, it was a, a a meeting of the Prince alumni minds, as I call it. And yeah. uh, there were there were some people on that stage I'd never played with before, or performed with, I mean. And then uh, some, a lot of whom I had performed with, but it was really fun. It was like, it was like uh, mm, it, stuff that should happen more often, I think, with Prince alumni, uh, right. as, as, as I like to call us, you know, because I actually, I was in the NPG, the first incarnation of that for four years. That's right. Yeah. Also, after... Um, the revolution was disbanded by Prince, but, you know, regardless of that, um, you know, one of those band members was there, but he was a dancer at the time I was mm -hmm. in the MPG and that was Kirk Johnson. So, but he was on drums. Yeah. And, yeah. And then of course, you know, Paul Peterson was leading the group right. and, uh, he was in the family and, uh, Boy, I don't know. There, there was just a. I'll try to. I don't know if I should name them all. There were twelve people on stage. Yeah, I, I saw a video. I recognized nearly everybody, even Marva <laughs> with her blonde yeah, hair. Yeah, Marva King. There were there were f uh, four horn players on mm -hmm. stage at any given time. Uh, uh, Sonny Thompson was playing bass throughout mm -hmm. the night when Paul wasn't. Right. And um, and then just me. I was the only keyboard guy up there. Oh, but, but JP was, didn't jump on the keys? No, he just was in the horn section this time oh, okay. around. And uh, what else was going on up there? Just uh, Homer Odell from Mid Condition mm -hmm. was up there. And uh, I don't know, that's it. I can't think of everybody at the moment. It'll come to me. Yeah, you I, had Shelby J. Shelby, uh, yeah, Shelby J. I apologize. Yeah, right now, you know, you know. Speaking of Kirk, Marvel. I saw him on a tour at Madison Square Garden with Prince, Larry Graham, and Shaka Khan. He played drums for all three sets. <laughs> all three. He was the only drummer for three three acts. Prince. Yeah, it was at Madison Square Garden. It was uh, the New Power Soul Festival. Shaka. No kidding. Larry Graham and then Prince. Kirk played drums all three. Oh, oh, Pri oh, Kirk played drums. Yeah, yeah, Kirk did. I'm sorry, yeah. I misunderstood you. Right, right. Wow. Yeah, I, yeah. But Kirk is is a great drummer. Yeah, I, I yeah. I really like like his playing a lot. So tell and, us, um, you're getting ready to rehearse with your friends from the Revolution, and you guys have reunited since Prince is passing. Um, you're doing two spectacular shows at First Ave for the celebration. What's it like getting back together and working with your old bandmates? Well, it's it's always uh, a, a joy and a great time, and I'm really looking forward to it because I haven't seen uh, – I see Bobby and talk to Bobby, you know, because he lives here, so I see right. him more often. But Wendy and Lisa are out in L.A. and Mark Brown is in Atlanta now. Mm -hmm. So I just speak to them on the phone occasionally. So I'm looking forward to physically – being in their presence again and right. uh, getting getting up and, and playing the songs so because we're we're the guys that did it we're the people yeah. you know i mean yeah everybody thinks revolution prince hand in hand that era 1999 purple yeah. rain and and we we saw you in connecticut at the the wolf den mohegan sun amazing performance um 
sure emotional for you guys, especially back then, right? Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Right. Now, for rehearsal, where are you rehearsing? Minneapolis? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense for them to come because that way we can all be here and then like we'll have a dress rehearsal the day before at, uh, right. at First Avenue as well. Um, I know you had Rob Funkstar before and also uh, Stokely Rick James has uh, performed where you guys are. Is it just going to be the revolution without guests or? There, there are going to be some surprise guests. Oh, okay. Right. That, that hasn't been announced yet. I'm just yeah. going to be. T tickets are still available or sold out? Uh, I believe the 22nd is sold out for sure but double check with the box office because i'm mm -hmm. not that's what i'm hearing but you never know right excuse me and then friday i believe there are some tickets left for the friday night the 21st okay at this point but the 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 prince estate decided they wanted to just buy out all the tickets and then sell them with different package deals and they've now released some less expensive package rates i guess okay because maybe they were a little too steep for a few people. And, and it's so it seems like uh, they've been playing are planning more events outside of Paisley Park this year than than past, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 But but yeah. Um, it's coming together and it's gonna be a great time and yeah. Tell tell us about First Avenue. Um, I've been there once. I went after Purple Rain. Um, but the legacy of it and what kind of venue for those who haven't been there? Uh, wh what's it like at first half? Well, it, it's, uh, it, it holds when it's packed, it, you can shove 700, 1700 people in there. Okay. Uh, but usually they like to keep it around 1500 or so just otherwise it gets too crazy. But I've, I've been there when they packed it before. And even for one of our shows that they did that mm -hmm. you know, back in 2016, so, but I don't, I don't think that's could be scary, but anyway, um, it, it's, they've really renovated it over the years or they've, they've kept maintaining it. You know, they've had a few issues with, uh, things breaking in there and, you know, one, one time part of the ceiling collapsed and it came oh, down, nobody got right. hurt and then they right. fixed that. Uh, and they've, they've just done a lot of, uh, nice renovations, including expanding, the dressing rooms there's two dressing rooms there always were two but now they've mm -hmm. really made them modern and bigger and really nice which is great for the artists too and uh other than that it's uh you know it's a two-level facility mm -hmm. and uh it, it's gr good great sight lines excuse me <coughs> great sight lines usually in there and um, it, there's a lot of history. Now, when I was growing up, the original name of that club was called The Depot when it first oh, opened okay. because right. because it, cause it was a, a bus depot, Greyhound bus depot for Minneapolis. It's the original right. building for that. And, uh, and so when it was shut down for whatever reason, maybe it just needed a bigger place. I think they did something bigger. Or, right. So then somebody bought that and called it the depot. And then the first show that ever debuted there in 1970 was Joe Cocker. Wow. Uh, it was the headliner. And then it, it just moved on from there. You know, fast forward to about 1976, maybe. Mm -hmm. And at five, I can't remember exactly the year it became Uncle Sam's. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing the name. And yeah. then it became Sam's, mm -hmm. shortened to Sam's Club. <laughs> Not the, not the one we go to for shopping, like Walmart right, right. People. So, <laughs> but it still had the logo with Uncle Sam and all that. And I first played there actually with another band in 1970, early 77, I believe it was. And just a cover band, rock band I was playing right. at the time. And, and then later on, Prince, you know, we played there once when it was still Sam's in 1981. The first time we ever played there as a band for the Dirty Mind tour. Right. And then when it, it became First Avenue, not long after that, which was made famous in the movie Purple Rain. Yeah. Uh, you know, most, how about the, uh, the dressing room scenes in Purple Rain? It was shot actually at First Ave? No. Oh, okay. 
You want to spill the news on that or no? Well, no, I mean, it's a movie, you know, I mean, right, now, right. you know, you know, now you could probably do it back then. The dressing rooms were too small to do that and make it work. But right. now you, you might be able to set up in these new dressing rooms and film <laughs> if you really wanted to do, do it. Yeah. But um, yeah, so the, they built sets, I believe, like out in some buildings in Eden Prairie somewhere for the movie. And they, they made them look like dressing rooms. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the rest of uh, your lifetime, that's going to be it's going to be forever. And, and long after that, you know, just a legendary performance and, and concert film. I, I watched actually the last night I came across the MTV premiere party. Yes. Mark Goodman and everybody coming in and everybody was so young. I mean, you know, Sheila was unsure of herself, nervous and Morris, you know, it, but it was great to see. Yeah, we were all green as heck, as you say. Yeah. You know, we were, we were all just green. And and it's like Midwestern kids right, suddenly right. thrust into the Hollywood spotlight going, huh? How yeah. did this happen? You know, it's like, you really, it was like that. <laughs> Even though right. we've been working, we had worked pretty hard from, you know, I, I joined the group in late 78, the first Prince incarnation group. And uh, so this was 1984. So that's a, that's a solid six years of, of really um, wall to wall hourly work <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with this, with him, with his right. work ethic, his work, work, worth work ethic was like no other, mm. no other. And, At least not that I know of, not that I know of, maybe Springsteen, maybe Michael Jackson, those guys, but that's, that's what it takes. You have to really devote 24 seven to your craft. Yeah. And all that preparation work, paid exactly. off for it. Exactly. Just a great tour. The, you know, my first tour seeing you was uh, the 1999 tour. I saw you at Hartford, Connecticut. There was a massive snowstorm. Oh, I remember that night. I remember it well. <laughs> and I always joke, I kidnapped my girlfriend at the time. It wasn't really a kidnapping, but I was so determined. It was an hour drive. It took us three hours. I was so determined to go to the show. And I made it to the show but her mom didn't want us to go. And uh, I, you know, great show. I came back. It took me like two, three months to go inside her house. <laughs> and, her, and her father pulled me aside. We were still dating. Oh no! He said, can I have a word with you, Joe? He sits me down. He goes, I apologize, you know. And he said, if it ever happens again, I'm coming for you. That's all he said. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, a, that's unbelievable. That's amazing. So this, uh, this wow this that's, nice lady whenever she hears prince i hope she doesn't think of me all the time but that's yeah a, that's a that, true story but that's a but that's again that's another scene from like a great rom-com somewhere you know right yeah right. yeah yeah it's a scene in a rom-com when the father is like mm, and you did something wrong and you're trying to you know exactly yeah so I'm you remember that. you remember that storm it you know, I think you did a show in Rhode Island or something, and then you guys came in or vice versa. But it was a big storm. I don't know. Remember the sequence of shows? We could always, you know, online you can look up the actual yeah, yeah. routing of tours. But I remember the storm quite well, and we were stuck there mm -hmm. an extra night because the right. day because of it. You know, thank God we had a day off. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have been had to cancel the next show. So yeah, I mean, I'll never forget being up in the hotel bar having a drink with people in the crew and the band and looking outside at this massive blizzard going on outside. Wow. Yeah. It was really something. And, and that 1999 tour, it was just, it was a build up to, to yeah. what was going to happen. 84, 85 with purple rain. Um, did you see, did you know it was going to take that next leap into the superstardom and worldwide fame Prince and, and the revolution? Well, in the back of your mind, you're you're thinking yes, mm -hmm. you're and there's that that thing that hope. You're thinking, okay, now the, he, if anyone can do pull this off, it's him. Right. However, he's it's an untested thing, being right. in a movie for him. He he hadn't acted in anything that I knew of. Maybe even in school, I don't know if he was in a play. I think I asked him. He said, no, I haven't really had any acting <laughs> experience. And me coming from an acting family, I mean, yeah, I right. Like, I was like, oh no. So I had a few, I, but I didn't really ha doubt him because I knew his personality so well by then that I thought and, and how brilliant he, he was that he was going to pull it off. Cause I, he could be so funny too. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
it's too bad they didn't give him give him enough funny stuff to do in the movie too. I mean, he yeah, had a few yeah. wry wry humorous moments that were more uh, not just overt. You know, he should have been in a. I always think he should have been in a film with Eddie Murphy or somebody else, happened, they were friends, or or, yeah. or, or, a, or a comedic female foil in a movie. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. I just, he, he had it. He could have easily done that too. Right. What was the, what was the gap? I, I, I guess the last show you did on Purple Rain Tour was the, uh, the Orange Bowl in Miami, right? That's right. And it was going to be, everybody's looking for the ladder. Like he's retiring from that. Did, what'd you guys think when he put out that statement? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, for me personally, when he announced that we were going to stop touring at that point and just do the United States and not go on to do Europe or Japan or possibly Australia, which we'd never played in Australia yet. Uh, we, we had been to Japan. What well, had we been to Japan yet? No, we hadn't been to Japan yet. We finally went in 80, in 86 on the parade tour, but on the purple rain tour, we didn't go there. We, we'd only toured domestically and maybe a little in Europe up till then. Okay. Right. So, I really was looking forward to Europe, Japan, and hopefully Australia, like most bands do when they have that big of an album, right? right. And he and he just said, uh, we're going on break. I'm taking a break. And right. you guys can do whatever you want. You'll be on the, retain. And he put us on retainer. Besides, oh, okay. which, is, which is like a dream job for a musician. I was like, how does that, how does that work? <laughs> Nowadays, it's like, what? Streaming doesn't pay the bills. But anyway, yeah. Um, so that was that. And, and then he, he followed through with that. So we didn't tour anymore until the following year or so, you know, he put out around the world in the day after he told us it was going to be a two year break and it wasn't a two year break. It was more like a five month break. So that was that, that, but that's him, you know, yeah. you just go, you just go with the flow. Yeah. The purple and, rain uh, tour. I mean, yeah. It had to be amazing for you guys as a fan. I think I saw like six shows. I saw the two in Philly. Then I actually slept out for tickets at the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. Those were the days of sleeping out. Three in the morning, the the crowd started pushing each other. They brought it was insane. Mounted policemen breaking the windows outside the Nassau Coliseum, Jeez. and we we wound up getting tickets behind the stage after all that. So. um and then there's one thing, I don't know if you remember, you guys changed it up because you flew to, uh, for the, the Oscars, right? You had a matinee show. Well, I, I wasn't invited to go to the Oscars. So okay. It was pretty much Prince. And uh, I think he, he brought Wendy and Lisa along with him for that. Yeah. One. You guys did the last show in NASA was a matinee show. And, okay. uh, I just remember not getting the will call tickets. We're outside in here and you guys open up with 17 days and. We got in just for the finale. It was it was insane. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea that things like that were going on in the background. Oh yeah. I'm sure it, our viewers and listeners have a lot of stories, but uh, you know, great, great shows. And you guys, speaking of around the world in a day, you guys kind of sneak peek some uh, songs from the the tour on, on Purple Rain, right? Yeah. We, yeah. I think we did. I just don't quite remember it. I which ones they were right now. Right. Not sure. I think Maybe. America, you, you may have. Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. America. Yep. Right. Because I remember Paul, Paul Peterson came out for an encore, I think. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, reliving those days. And um, do you think Prince ever wanted to uh, go back to that kind of level or you just saw him kind of regressing from it? I, well, when, when you say regressing, you mean that level of popularity? Yeah, trying popularity write, and try, yeah. trying to recreate a, a major hit that's so big that you get that yeah, sort of yeah, response. Exactly. You know, I, I'm not sure if he ever was trying to get back to that kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. for most artists, when you do reach that pinnacle where, where you have a major hit, and, and, and of course, this was with a movie and all that, it's kind of hard to top it, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So he just kept reinventing himself going forward. And as he kept doing that, I'd, I'd check in on his material uh, in the 90s and 2000s, whatever. And um, some things really moved me. I thought they were great. And other things I, I didn't. I was like, what? what? 
<laughs> okay, well, it's not yeah. working for me, but that's cool if that's what you're doing. Because not everything moves me with any given artist. It just depends. Mm-hmm. It's all subjective. But he he did something uh, that was really interesting in that time. He did some things where I felt he didn't sound like the guy I used to know, which was interesting. It was very chameleon like mm-hmm. like I hear the songwriting and hear the voice and I was like, that doesn't even sound like him right now. Oh. I don't recognize mm-hmm. that that tone or whatever's going on in his voice, how way he's delivering from what I remember. It was interesting. Not and I was mm-hmm. I it didn't I didn't hate it though. That's the thing. I liked right, it. Right. And it's just like wow, how he just doesn't sound like the same guy at the moment. Right. Trans completely transformed from his earlier work, you know, of whatever. So that's that's cool in a sense if you're reinventing it to that level. Right. Too, and it's still moving you, and that's oh, that's success to me, you know. Yeah, I'm sure it was a challenge for him to to stay creative and excited about it for for everything. Yeah, and I, you know, and I felt people were too hypercritical of his third eye girl period. With the, he surrounded himself with some just amazingly talented uh, mm-hmm. female artists, and I, I he always championed women in the industry around him, and that right. I give him a lot of credit for that too, for helping everyone to have a place. So anyway, it's just. Uh, yeah, and we 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 played with Donna Grantis the other night. I forgot to mention her. Yeah, a- absolutely phenomenal guitarist. You know, you know, you say it. John Blackwell told me. Um, he told me it wasn't on an interview. He told me in private. He says you're really gonna love our guitar player Donna Grantis when, because he was, he was doing work in and out with Prince's band, and I think um, maybe Liv Warfield's band. He was going yeah. back and forth. So, um, yeah, he said Don is phenomenal. Yeah. And I just saw Liv uh, Warfield on America's Got Talent the other night. Did you see that performance? Yeah, yeah. My wife pulled it up. Yeah, great, great, wow. great performance. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's good to see all these there's no There's no slackers in the Prince alumni musicians, <laughs> right? No. <laughs> yeah, it's just on and on. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, it's it's such an exciting thing to see all these people still doing it let let me ask you because you you've been you were involved with prince for you know decades and in the recording studio you go as far back you know it was great when you did the interview revisit back at sunsets down at sunsets Mm. town out in california yes um that time period you were always on call you know matt i need you here how how did that work when prince called you in you just go in and go, you know, to just, Hey, what's up? What do you, what do you need? You know, what are you, what song are you working on? Whatever. But he, you know what? I was not the guy that he did that to a lot. He didn't, mm-hmm. he could play great keyboards. You know, he brought me in for certain things that I would do that he didn't, you know, I had a style or the way I would play a solo was different from him. So he'd bring me in for certain things. He felt that I was strong in that maybe he wasn't as much or he liked my taste and whatever that was and to play it a certain way so but he was uh believe me you you listen to the synthesizer solo in lady cab driver or any song soft and wet they're yeah. phenomenal synthesizer solos brilliant just brilliant works of art in my opinion as a keyboardist how how um descriptive was he for you to play a certain part was he did he get right in there and and tell you you do it like this do it like that or you had to figure it out and maybe he gave you a little well he usually wanted you to figure it out because he didn't want to take the time to physically show you right it, only when i was slightly stumped on something would i bug him to show right. show me something or if there was a sound that he used in the studio on a synthesizer that I didn't know what, how he did it or what he used. He, hey, you got to show me that sound you used. And that that's, that would be about it. So it just varied. You know, mm-hmm. I'd say 90% of the time I usually got it on my own. But And then later on, as we had access to the studio tapes, especially at Paisley Park and whatnot, I would have special 
uh, mixes of songs made for me with the keyboards higher in the mix volume wise. Oh, okay, wow. And then and then I could pick stuff out that he did uh, easier because of that. So so was it easier for you when you were asked to record with him uh, at Sun Sound or back at Paisley? Did you notice that things move faster at either place or just about no, the same? About the same. Yeah. It's no different, you know, what room, whatever room you're in, right. you know. Did you ever, did you ever walk in the vault? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Some, some great stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, is there uh, anything that comes to the top of your mind that hasn't been released that you would one day love to see? Yeah, you know, um, I know that uh, some members of the revolution who worked on the Roadhouse Garden record and uh, Dream Factory, I believe, right. is what they were called. They were, they were, you know, albums that were in the works before Prince decided to disband the group. And mm -hmm. um, I, I can't remember, maybe a couple of those got released with the purple rain yeah the super edition. edition yeah uh, and, but there's some other stuff still unreleased from there you know that that i really liked a lot yeah i played a little bit on some of that but that was a that one was very uh wendy and lisa heavy with prince right those particular songs we we've seen you know on youtube the kind of the bootleg rehearsals like grainy black and white uh yeah. rehearsals. where where was that recorded uh there was a uh you know a small warehouse over on the western suburb suburban side of minneapolis uh, is in eden prairie minnesota okay which is you know like about 25 minute drive to the west of, of minneapolis downtown mm -hmm. now now that I'm sure there's other rehearsals like that and performances that have been recorded. Yeah. That would be great to see now. Well, there, there are a lot. I don't know where all those tapes are. I don't have any of those. I have some VHS of actual shows, you know, from the right. board, from the mixing board and just one camera shot of the stage and the direct audio going to the VHS. And then I have a lot of my own personal cassettes uh, that I recorded rehearsals of and, uh, right. stuff that came off the boards, you know, for learning things. Got to preserve those. <laughs> oh yeah. They've been preserved. They've actually yeah. been digitally archived. That's great. Yeah. 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 Now, now, um, going back to the, the archives and stuff, have you, have you seen, this was during the musicology tour, kind of like the, the banter backstage with, uh, his band at the time, the MPG. Did mm -hmm. you guys did Prince have record some of that with uh, the revolution, you know, kind of stuff we never see? Probably. Yeah. I, I yeah. would say most likely mm -hmm. there were, he had cam, you know, like kind of more candid cameras and stuff going on. Right. Now, now uh, how about the food fight with John Breen or the, that, that interview? Yeah, that didn't get on. I don't believe that was on <laughs> camera. Right. I don't think. Yeah. So I don't know for sure. I mean, there was a lot of hijinks with, with you guys traveling. I, I mean, you had to let loose. There was, kind of maybe clarify this. I read something on the airplane. Uh, there, there was something. Somebody was acting up. We, you were involved, right? I'm not sure what what, what, you, what was. I don't know. Story. There was somebody with uh, a, a bag, a vomit bag or something. Or Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, early in, in the early on like we're talking about 79 80 and we were doing the 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 tour with um i think it was rick james possibly or even before that we did we did like a club tour first and we were flying a little bit busing a part of it and flying and i, I can't remember was that one or the following thing right after that but prince really liked um liked it when i did a, like a, a fake vomit episode Right. One time into the bag. I did it on the plane one time in front of him and he thought that was very really funny and he thought, Can you do that and fake out a stewardess for me? So he could so he could get a laugh out of that. He wanted to <laughs> play a practical joke right, on, right. on the stewardess. And of course, being the goofball I can be, I said, Sure. Yeah. So she comes over and I said, oh, I'm not feeling good. Or he says, Hey, my friend isn't feel he <laughs> he brought her over and said, My friend isn't feeling good. Can you 
help him and then and then i had to grab the bag real quick and then bury my face in it and make horrible vomiting noises <laughs> um, right. and then i don't know said, where oh, i heard God. that <laughs> and then she ran off to get me another bag <laughs> and then by the time she came back prince was laughing so hard she knew it was a joke at that point right right terrible hey. he was not he was really naughty yeah yeah that's right a lot of get people don't kicks. see that time yeah, got his kicks off of that kind of stuff, and then uh, what else? Oh, the, the time that I I thought it would be a good idea to take an emergency bullhorn off of the plane. Oh, what was it? Was there an arrest? Because I see yeah. there was an, Oh, there yeah. was. Okay. Sta- it was a stage prop idea that I told Prince about a couple of days earlier. I said, "Hey, you know, what do you think about getting one of these uh, bullhorns on stage, and you could use it as a stage prop?" He goes, "Yeah, that's not, that's an interesting idea." And sure enough, we're on the plane, and there's one up above in the bin. And he says, hey, let me see that thing. So I, I unstrapped it and handed it to him. He says, you think you got room in your carry-on bag for that? And I go, we can't take that off the plane. And he goes, ah, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. <laughs> who, who got Was that the, the arrest, yeah. something like that? Oh, yeah, we got in trouble. So, so I couldn't fit it in the bag, and then Des Dickerson managed to get it in his bag, even though he didn't want to put it in there. Prince said, put it in your bag. It's okay. Don't worry. Nothing will right. happen. So somebody reported it before we even took off. The pilot comes out and says, you better return the um, bullhorn. So Des retur- returns the bullhorn, and then Prince says, well, it was my idea. And I said, yeah, it was our idea. And then they took us off the plane, and the Memphis police, we were in Memphis, the Memphis police were called and they handcuffed Prince and I together and took us down to the Memphis jail downtown. Oh, wow. So it and is they, true. They, yeah. they held us for about two hours. Okay. And and then we got out and we had to fly on a, a chartered small plane to get to the next show. Mm-hmm. Hi, everybody. It's a true story. But the yeah. picture, but listen, the picture of Prince... Right, in with holding a mugshot up with his hands with the numbers right. that that never happened. That's photoshopped. Oh, okay. It's so famous. that wasn't true. No, they never took mugshots or fingerprinted us. Great. Hey, thanks. So thanks for clarifying. It's a federal offense to take emergency equipment off an airplane. Okay, for Unbe- for our un- unbeknownst to us. That's right. A learning experience. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Now, a couple tours I would have loved to see. Uh, the first one, uh, Rick James and, and Prince, you guys touring. So many stories. I mean, other musicians have told stories about that tour. And I was a fan of both both those guys. Um, yeah. You guys, was was the tension and, the, and the, the drama all what it was made up to be? Yeah, it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was it was it was definitely some some competition going on. Right, right. And um Mike Murphy of uh the system said the stage that they gave you guys was so tiny the amount of room up there, right? Yeah, but it wasn't terrible. I mean we had they had us on risers and stuff, so it wasn't it wasn't the worst, but you know, right. what are you gonna do? Yeah. It, you're an opening act. You're it's your first break. Hey, we're cake kid, we're giving you a break here. Yeah, yeah, right, right. We're going to put you in front of some people and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that was that, you know, and then we we went over really well and, and Rick got upset, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> okay. I mean, Rick Rick had a, has pro- well-documented problems and everything like that, but I, I think, I don't know, he, he definitely had some jealousy on you know, some of Prince's success, I, I thought. Yeah, no, there he was a very... Uh, I don't know if he maybe he liked Prince and wanted to give him a break, or maybe it was just our management convincing his management or the record label. Somebody somehow got there, got us on that tour, right? To open for Rick. So, he, I mean, obviously he had to agree to it. So he's probably like, "Oh, this upstart ain't gonna show me up," you know. He's probably yeah. thinking. But yeah, we showed him up a bit, and that's what happens. I, you know, I never believed in that stuff with the music. I, I'm not into the competition thing mm-hmm. and trying to show somebody. It's like, cause to me, if that artist moves you, that, that artist moves you. And that's yeah, that, yeah, right. you know, yeah. you, and you shouldn't say disparage another artist if they don't move you, you know, or they didn't, you mm-hmm. didn't like their music. It's no, 
or be competitive with them for whatever reason, because maybe they're getting a better response than you are that night. That's just, to me, is, you don't, that's not cool. You just but have to ego, move on. Egos, then, egos get in the way. Oh, in the music business? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So another tour uh, I, I missed, it was before 1999, was when the Zap and the Time uh, and Prince, the triple th- the early Red triple tour. tour. Yeah. What, mm. what was that like? I mean, Roger's phenomenal musician. Well, he, he had his following and he put on a great show mm-hmm. and then we came on and did our thing and it was fine. It was all equal and entertaining. And there were no, there were, there wasn't, weren't any rivalries seemingly to me with, with Zap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With Roger. Yeah. I, I saw them in Queens. This is after Ro- Roger passed and, we yeah. were going walk into the park and you're hearing the vocoder and just like the zap sound, but it definitely wasn't the same. I mean, it was it was tough. So uh, I'd like to just clarify something about what you just said about the vocoder thing. Okay, is that that is that's actually a, a thing that he used with a synthesizer called the talk box. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard Have you ever heard that term? Yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. okay. So, yeah, I mean, vocoder is another way of saying it, but this is this uh, the difference between a vocoder and a talk box. Okay, is that is that the vocoder is done electronically with a synthesizer? So when you're we're singing it in the mic, whatever chords you're playing down here on the keyboard, okay, will, the vowel sound that you're singing and whatever you're doing will come across in a, in this weird robotic synthesizer tone. The talk box that Roger used was an actual speaker, a really little driver in a thing down below with a, bl- a plastic tube that would come up and be right next to the microphone and go in your mouth. And then you'd play okay. the synthesizer, and that sound would be in your mouth bouncing around and then come back out into the microphone. Wow. So when you're, so when you're moving your mouth, you're going, and making right. it. And you sound like you're singing in like in a weird tone with in hearing some of the the wording comes through, but it's not perfect, you know, and it's really robotic sounding as well, but it's all done through a speaker. Right, right. And a tube. How about Frampton? What did, what did he use? Same thing. Talk box. Oh, talk box. Okay. Exact same thing. All right. So he was doing, running his guitar through it and Roger was running his mini Moog synthesizer through it. Oh, Okay. So yeah, man, thanks to Semi. I will I will not make that mistake again. That that's interesting to know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah no, it's good. I I'm, I'm not didn't want to you know, just want to clarify for your audience yeah, yeah. what those technical things are. Right, right. Yeah. So you were um we we talked before you came. You were nice enough to come on when we paid tribute when Prince initially passed in 2016. Um, we we did we did talk a little bit about before you know. You saw some pictures, and I, I saw some pictures I saw, and you you thought he wasn't looking at his peak form and everything. Um, when was the last time you actually uh, saw him? Because I know you guys had a good good chat. Uh, the meeting I had with him was uh, in September of 2014. Okay, right. That's the last time I saw him face-to-face. Had a and, phone and call. The- I had a couple of phone calls after that, but not – but that was the right. last meeting with him. And you, you kind of had a feeling that maybe down the road, you guys were going to come back together for, for something, right? Yeah. He clearly stated, uh, he w- was thinking about reuniting the revolution for something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I always wanted to ask you, cause you, you've been involved with Prince's rehearsals and concerts so often and, and the amazing splits and dance moves and everything. Did you ever see him? really get hurt in rehearsals doing the dancing no i never saw him like get injured from a from doing a dance move and saying oh and stop oh god i gotta take a break i just hurt something you know or pulled right. a muscle or i never saw that ever um wow. there there was one incident on the purple rain dress rehearsals though where they were trying out the you know the old claw foot style bathtub I don't know right, if, if yeah. people remember there was, yeah. that was on a moving hydraulic right, riser right. and he'd lay back in the tub and there was like a fake shower nozzle. And mm-hmm. anyway, uh, the first time they, they tried it at rehearsal, it fell over when he laid down in it. It wasn't nailed down to the platform and it went 
over backwards like this with him in it and fell wow. about 20 feet to the floor with him in it. And then he, he bruised his hips, one hip, right? I think. And so he didn't, fortunately didn't break anything, but it was, you know, we were all just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. And, and so they, whatever the carpenters either didn't realize how lightweight that was. Cause it was probably mm -hmm. fiberglass. I think it was probably, it wasn't like a real thing or they made it as a prop. So it wasn't nailed down and it had like kind of a angled back and it, it just didn't stay balanced up there. Anyway, it all got fixed and he survived it and we went on to do the tour. <laughs> but yeah, I, I only yeah. saw him take one fall in a concert. It was, you weren't in the band. It was at Radio City Music Hall, the Prince and the MPG, one of the act, act one, act two tours. He was doing the ballad and he slipped, must've been a wet spot on, on the floor, slipped, popped right up, continued along, but he shot a glance at somebody to like, get this floor fixed but you know wow he hit it i mean he hit his little errors if he had it pretty pretty good at least you know i thought hmm. yeah you know who i saw perform last night for the first time live i've ever been to see and it was that? a great show i mean albeit very vegasy but really good donny osmond has brought his vegas show to minneapolis last oh night. wow yeah and as you know paul peterson and jason yeah. used to play with him for a right. number of years in in vegas i think quite a while 10 years worth of time maybe yeah yeah so they were there last night and i I'd, I'd never seen him perform before oh did amazing. paul play or he just no no play? no no he was just yeah. there to see the show but it, it, he did this amazing retrospective of his life with a full video screen and back and wow it was really something you know, you know, I had Paul on one time and he was on tour with Donnie and I start the intro <laughs> to the interview and right in the beginning of the interview, I'm hearing a voice for like 15 seconds joking with me. It was Donnie Osmond. He gave him the phone to play a joke on me at the start. Oh, yeah. 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 So, oh, you know, I wanted to tell you, you were in Vegas in March. I was, you went to in March, right? Yes, that's correct. I was in Vegas two hotels or so. I was staying at the Horseshoe at the same time, but I saw it was a corporate private event, and I, yeah. I didn't want to bug you guys. So, yeah, I saw that, and yeah, yeah. So you did a little St. Paul and uh, the Minneapolis All Stars, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you like going to Vegas to play stuff, or? Sure, sure, of course. Right. A anytime, I love I love visiting Vegas. I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't know if I could live there. It's, it's yeah, too my hot. dad lives there. Yeah, it, it's too hot for me. Yeah, but but I I like it, and if I'm there in the winter, it's even even better. So, yeah, I, I walked into the hotel room, and there was Donny Osmond, a magazine on the cover. Oh the sure, room. yeah. So he he's a a young Wayne Newton, right? He is, and he yeah. he he's my age, and just sang and performed like a guy in his forties to me. It was amazing. And looked like he was in his forties too. That's what just really blew me away. Yeah, he's, right, he's, right. He's very well quaffed, as they <laughs> say. Yeah. So. Let, let's let's talk about uh, your own production projects. I mean, you, you just you're not sitting around just uh, playing Prince music and the Revolution. Of course, we all love that. But let, let's talk about some of your productions and what what you have going on and have been in the past few years. Okay. Well. Um, I, there, there's a particular artist here in Minneapolis. She's got her own YouTube channel. Uh, she, she goes uh, by the name of Michelle Rose. Okay. And uh, she's, uh, I would say she's been a protege of mine since about 2017 or so. She is now studying and about to get her master's degree in songwriting from the Berklee School of Music in Boston. Mm. And, uh, we've been working on her, you know, career for quite since then, you know, but in the beginning I was really writing and producing a, a lot of her stuff. And she was coming in and saying, well, I have this idea for a song. Can we flesh it out and you can help me with the lyrics and whatever. And we, that's how we worked. And then as she kept progressing in school, she's, she was starting to write her own lyrics and doing her melodies and really, now she's off and running as a songwriter, which is really fantastic. And I brought my son in also to work with her in the last few years. Who's he's also producing my son, yeah, Max, Max, right? Yeah, yeah Max, and uh, 
he's been working with a great songwriting team out of uh, Los Angeles called Mosadi, and they've okay. had a few placements with the likes of Post Malone and others. And wow. they're, they're submitting material to a lot of major label artists these days. Right. Whether they get placed or not, it's always a crapshoot because you're, you're doing yeah. for the, there's a lot of other great songwriting teams out there, but, but these guys are, uh, they're, they're doing some great work. And then my son's going to be putting out some solo material. I also uh, I, I, am uh, working on some new material for future oh, release. Yeah. Right. And, uh, just producing some various projects for people and doing session work for some people out of Nashville lately. Mm -hmm. uh, I co-wrote some really fun country pieces uh, with some, some people down there. Country mm -hmm. is very in vogue with the right. hip hop crowd now. <laughs> yeah. Go, go figure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've been, re had requests to do some of that. And, mm -hmm. um, what else? I, I've just been playing live too with different people for fun. Just yeah, you got locally. you got the uh, what's that? Yeah, with locally people, local people besides St. Paul and the Minneapolis Funk All Stars, but right. there's another another group here uh, that I work with from time to time, which is uh, led by a friend of mine named Peter Bourne, and he has a, a nonprofit called Unlocked Mission that I'm involved with that works with young people and music and right. uh, teaching things like that. And and then the other nonprofit out west called Future Youth Records, which I've been involved with since 2013, as a producer. And wow. now my son is my son is also producing for right. them too. So you're not staying idle and just you know, no. and you're passing your wisdom on. I mean, you you you've yeah. seen you seen the peak of the peak of of music, and then you know indie stuff, and you know you've got so much to offer to everybody. Yeah. And, and I've been getting into sync licensing more and oh, more okay. too for right. the last, uh, you know, since about 2009 or so, uh, either submitting material to be used in TV spots or movies and things like that. And I worked for a company that represents artists as well for that same, you know, song right. placements and stuff like that. Wendy and Lisa, Nurse Jackie, right? Maybe, maybe coming back. Well, they, they actually do the, the, <clears throat> what you call is underscore for these shows. Right. I haven't really gotten into that side of the business because, uh, uh, although now I'd like to get into it because you can work more long distance uh, right. for Minneapolis. Yeah. But but before you had to really be living out in LA to do mm -hmm. a lot of that kind of work. That's changing now, though. Right. You've got uh, forty years of Purple Rain and uh, the events the estate is putting together. All always great. Um, I, you know, hopefully we get to talk in 10 years. No, actually, excuse that. Well, 10 years, Purple Rain 50th, but uh, sign of the times in uh, three years. I would love to. Yeah. To, yeah. I know. I know you were a huge part of that. I watched. Yeah. The other night I watched the Peach and, and Black podcast. They did the document. You were in there. Yes. Yeah. God, God willing. We'll be yeah, there. God willing. That's it. God willing. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, you know, ask, ask Wendy, I don't know if this is an off the question, you know, kind of thing. When I saw the second show at Madison Square Garden for the, uh, the parade, the hit and run tour, she mm -hmm. was on stage, the second show, she took an apple, she was eating it and threw it into the crowd during the show. Yes. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that, yeah. Well, you know, back uh, when I was on tour, Prince liked to get have me go out early and throw fruit at the audience and bring a big oh, fruit okay. bowl of fruit and hand people bananas and apples and oranges and stuff like that. That was the hit so, and run tour. No, that was later. Like, oh. uh, and I, I remember uh, he had me doing that on the the nineteen ninety nude tour one. He had me oh, doing that too. Okay. Also, also like I think I had me do do that on Love Sexy a bit. Go up and throw fr right. fruit fruit food out to people <laughs> yeah. yeah i saw hey. love sexy in philly that was that was a great show yeah yeah really uh that was a very innovative show because it was in the round right right and right. You, it, it was the first use of surround sound system in an arena where you had speakers at each corner of the arena and then speakers around the top of the stage in the circle of the stage above the center really really crazy Wow. Well, what was the what was the toughest tour rehearsal wise to go out on? <laughs> that's, 
I should have asked you that funny. before. The toughest, the toughest, hardest <laughs> thing. Um, they were they were all very meticulously rehearsed by Prince, mm -hmm. right? And and um, I would say the the time spent rehearsing was usually two to three months per tour, right? Cul culminating, you know, at least two two and a half months, culminating in a solid two weeks of pre production rehearsals somewhere in a big arena where they'd hang all the lights and sound. And then he'd work with the, our lighting designer, uh, uh, Roy Bennett. Yeah. And, really. yeah. and, uh, one of the greatest in the business, by the way. Mm -hmm. And he, he would work out all the cues and everything. So the band would have to be stopping and starting and stopping and starting. Okay. This is going right. to happen here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Play that again. But, so we were just up there for hours on end, just, just being manipulated to, <laughs> <laughs> play play little snippets of the song progressing forward for the lighting cues to be programmed into the computer and all that stuff yeah it's i mean you, you we see the show you guys show up it's the life you know we think it's the life but you know it's got and also stressful if you have a family right as far as being called that split second i got to be there and trying to get out of something right yeah fortunately uh, that that didn't happen to me too much Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Not not that it was a bad thing. I mean, if you're right. I mean, it's a bad thing if you're if you're a young father or a father with young kids at home. But I right. I I waited <laughs> to do all that until I you was did the done, smart thing. Being yeah. Done with with touring and all that. Right. So yeah. Now now you guys were notorious for having special guests, especially the after shows come on stage. Do you have a few highlights of other musicians who came and jam with you guys? Oh yeah. Um, well, during the Purple Rain tour uh, uh, in Los Angeles, we had Sting, Bruce Springsteen, Madonna, Huey Lewis, Ted Nugent. Wow. Those are the first five I can think of right now that stepped up and and either sat in or just hung out on stage with right. us, and uh, and various e different evenings at the L.A. Forum. And uh, during that tour, and then of course some of the fans that would that were in the front row, like I'll never forget seeing Elizabeth Taylor in front wow. of the stage and like standing, oh okay, against, like in the front row up against the stage with people, right, and putting her arms up towards Prince like she was a, a big fan clamoring for Prince to know it's me, yeah, your old friend Liz Taylor, damn it. <laughs> Did Prince, uh, you know, meet some like Elizabeth Taylor or was. Yeah. I'll never oh, forget okay. the time he told me he met Barbara Streisand at Sunset Sound. They were, they were both working in one of the diff different studios. Right. And, and, and apparently Barbara said, so, so Prince, it's really nice to meet you. Do you think you could say hi to Dr. Fink for me? <laughs> there you go. And next day Prince comes up to me and goes, guess we wanted to say hi to you. Who? Barbara Streisand. Wow. I went, what? <laughs> oh my God. Did you tell her to call me? Yeah. Yeah. No, anyway, I just, I that, but, <laughs> but no. And then she came to a show one time. Right. Right. And we used to get, we used to get people coming to the dressing room doors backstage. Like, you know, one time Cher, knock, knock, knock. Can I use the restroom? And she <laughs> goes, she's going to use the restroom. Next thing you know, knock, knock, knock. It's Bruce Springsteen. Hey, I got to use the John. Is that okay? Okay, he goes in. <laughs> so this is what you, just the typical thing you see backstage. In yeah, some of these yeah. Shows. I met John Bon Jovi during the Love Sexy tour. He was just okay. hanging out in the hallway with us while we were getting ready to go on stage, chatting it up with me. Right. And he said, "No so, problem." So, uh, for for fans or other musicians coming for like a meet and greet, is it better to talk to a musician before or after a show? Hmm. Probably after. after. I'd say probably after. Yeah. Right. Meet right. greets are always better after. After. Okay. Yeah. So any plans for the revolution to do further dates after the celebration? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. We are talking about doing these things. Um, we, people are very busy with, you know, Wendy and Lisa have their, 
soundtrack music that they're really busy with it all the time. And so to do a tour, a concerted tour where you're out for like just traveling all the time, that probably won't happen. They're going to just be one-off dates that'll mm-hmm. be booked. So we just don't know. We'll see. How about a Vegas residency? Well, believe me, I've thought of that. And yeah. uh, we floated that idea and we may look at that too. I personally, mm-hmm. I personally want to play the sphere now after uh, seeing the YouTube. I saw that. Yeah. And, and seeing, and then the, the, right now the grateful dead uh, show is there with John Mayer. And I, I've seen some video out of that. A friend of mine brought me video of it back when he saw it. So mm-hmm. I, 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 I've, Believe me, I've been floating the idea a little bit. So yeah, I saw. Uh, I could see it from my hotel room, and but Brooke, Brooke mm-hmm. Calder's been. She went to see you too there, I think. Mm-hmm. Brooke, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it looks really nice. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. no, it's it's fantastic. I hear and really, really a, a, a every, every worth worth every dollar to actually go to a show there and see that. That's how spectacular people are saying it is. Yeah. So you've got a, uh, before we wrap up, we want to let our, our viewers and listeners on, on the audio side, on the podcast channels, uh, that the celebration, the revolution will be at First Ave, the legendary First Avenue, the legendary revolution. And that is June 20th and June 21st. Actually, it's it's the 21st oh. and 22nd. Oh, okay. June 21st and 22nd. <clears throat> yep. You can go to the celebration website or just type in, Revolution First Ave and click on the links if there are tickets available for any of the shows. And yeah, um, yeah you'll be there. And are you working any new songs into the repertoire or as of yet? Or uh, Let me see. I've got the set list right here. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's see here. It's pretty much kind of a lot of greatest hits thing. Mm-hmm. Really is. It's in a lot of lot of the music from Purple Rain album, <clears throat> the majority oh, yeah. of it. Right, right. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to reveal the set list. Yeah, yeah, we want. It. But we, we we wanted to keep it mainly the era of like after Wendy came in the group, which was Purple Rain era. So because it's the 40th right. anniversary, so it's Purple Rain and then Around the World in the Day and Parade albums, kind okay. of more more leaning towards material off of those records you know everybody talks about wendy and lisa having a, the influence on prince songwriting and different musicians and sounds but as a beatle fan did you have some of that influence leak into prince especially for around the world in a day yeah it seems as if that some the psychedelic 60s era leaked in there and mm-hmm. that that influence definitely came from wendy and lisa myself uh, and Bobby, because we that's we grew up in that, you know, and right. uh, of course, um, uh, I'm a, a major Beatles fan and had the opportunity to be a counselor at the what's called the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp in L.A. Yeah, La- right. In November of 2019, I, I got to work with Cheap Trick on that one. Wow. And they, they came in and they performed the whole Sgt. Pepper album with all these different groups of musicians there were eight different bands with eight different counselors myself included and we had a full orchestra playing with the bands it was called it was it was at the whiskey a go-go and it 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 was really fun i'd never done anything like that before yeah so you're 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 hoping to do do something like that again right yeah well after we did that the Mm -hmm. the the uh, the guy who was the head of the fantasy camp, uh, David Fishhoff, approached me about doing a Prince camp at Paisley Park, and oh, then the pand- wow. and then the pandemic hit. Ah, uh, so what are you going to do? Are you going to you going to kickstart that that uh, project? Possibly. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'd I, like I, to. I know you you've been over to, to <clears throat> Paisley Park since Prince's passing a few times, right? Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. You happy with with how they the changes and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's okay. I, I mean, I keep, I don't really know any of the people over there that well. Yeah. Right. I just, I just know that I, I perform there occasionally and that, you know, uh, Paul Peterson has been getting the all-stars special events booked in there right. for yeah. quite, quite, quite regularly. Actually, it's been very nice. So, 
um, they treat us well and they treat the revolution well and respect us. And uh, that's all that counts for me. You know? Yeah. For, forever linked the revolution, Dr. Matt Fink. And uh, the Minneapolis Sound, yeah, it's going to be great. And, and the Minneapolis Sound Museum, I know Jelly Bean Johnson's been working on that. Yep, and they just had a special event the other night that I couldn't make it to. But right. uh, I, I did one last year, though, where I performed at, at that Oh, okay. One. Yeah, with, with Jelly Bean. Right, yeah, great so, friend of ours as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. guy. Yeah, and, and I always give credit, I always say this, the musicians – who made their mark in Minnesota and Minneapolis area still there, still doing their thing. There's not, there's not so many left doing uh, in the business, still living where you are. A lot of people moved out. Um, do you mean from, from my era or current? Yeah, your, your camp. I mean, some of the, some of the guys moved to other cities and stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I like LA though. I like visiting LA and I go there occasionally to work or New York, you know, but, but being, you know, being a native of this area, it, it, you just, you know, we had family here and I just right. wanted to stay close to family, raising the fam, my, our kids here and make sure that mm -hmm. the grandparents had a place in their lives on a regular ba basis. Right. So, which so. was very helpful when I'm busy and I need, Hey guys, can you come over and do a little babysitting? Yeah. <laughs> Right, you know, right. And there is, yeah, gladly, you know. So yeah. it's great to have that family support. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've never been a, a parent, but uh, I always see, like, when my mom was alive, the thrill of having a grandkid. It's It takes it to another. It seems like they're more excited than actual kids, their yeah. own kid. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. Right. hey, Matt, hey, thanks. Thanks for coming on the show as always. And uh, I know you're going to have a couple great nights out. In, with the revolution and friends for life, yeah. you guys, right? Yeah. 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 And hopefully, hopefully more, you know, we are, we are definitely making a concerted effort to find some other uh, shows, mm. you know, out in the bigger cities and I, you know, like LA, New York, Chicago, right. Atlanta, we're trying, we're just trying to do these nice, like a, another version of the hit and run tour. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those, those were great shows the hit and run. And yeah. that was the first time, uh, Prince and Revolution played at Madison Square Garden, right? When you played, uh, there. I no, no, we played there for the Purple Rain tour. Actually, oh, you did? Too. Okay, yeah, before that, yeah. Okay, yep, yep, yeah. yeah I went on. It was my birthday uh, when I saw the Hit and Run tour at MSG. I could. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I could be wrong because he did say something on stage. He always dreamed when he was in New York. Oh, maybe it was the first time. Yeah. That's right. That was like right on my 10th, 10 year high school reunion that year. Oh, okay. And I couldn't go because we were playing at Madison Square Garden. Why you think he would have gotten another keyboardist <laughs> for the long haul? I <laughs> wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, dug, I, yeah. I, you know, right. I, I'd rather no, I'm, play I'm with Prince. I, yeah, yeah. So, I made it to my 20, though. Oh, you did? Okay. I did. I made it to that one. Oh, be, one last question. Okay. Um, I, I think we've talked about the many times you've come on the show. You still could, for who knows for how long, still been touring and recording with Prince, but you had already had a, uh, a business commitment in the business for it. What, what tour was it that he wanted you to go back out on? It wasn't a tour. It was just a one-off date, and that was uh, the Rock and Rio Festival. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who, who who's got to give you thanks for that for – letting them in the door for turning that down which which keep was it tommy oh yeah tommy yeah uh -huh. yeah all right <laughs> tommy barbarello speaking that's of, right yeah, yeah, yeah that's right so that was great he's another great guy yeah yep yep yeah hey matt hey thanks so much and and hope to see you either with uh the revolution or the all paul peterson the mpls all-stars and you're always welcome to come on awesome thank you appreciate it yeah Thanks for Back having me. Have fun at rehearsals. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. All right. Thanks, Matt. Yep.